worship here in our sanctuary and on Facebook Live. My name is Reverend Dr. Christy Coburn, and I am the pastor here at the United Church of Christ in Abington. If you're new or visiting with us here today, we extend a very warm welcome to you, and we hope you find this worship service a comfortable and loving place to be. If you're here in the sanctuary, I invite you to join us next door in the parish hall after worship for a coffee hour. It's a great chance to spend some time with friends. Also, if you're here in the sanctuary, I invite you to take out your phone and say hello to all of our friends at home. We are all an important part of our church community, so let's make sure we stay connected. Today, we're going to talk about Veterans Day, something near and dear to my own heart as a veteran myself. Veterans Day is this coming Thursday, and I'll also be sharing some information about the parade that's going to take place that day, which I hope you'll be able to attend. Working. There we go. Hold, please. Is that, is it, am I working? Yeah? Okay. Um, also, just want to mention that each week we do share communion together, but rather than traditional communion, we bring our own communion elements for safety's sake. So if you forgot your elements today or didn't bring anything with you, I invite you at any point before communion, which is after the sermon, um, to tiptoe back to the narthex, which is that room right back there, the entryway where you came in, and you can find some packaged cookies and water so that you can share with us in communion. Now, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. God of love and justice, we gather here today with our hearts full of memories of friends and family who served under arms in the wars of this world. We always remember in our hearts those who died in service and those who were injured or disabled. But today we come to celebrate all who served, all who offered their hearts and their energies and their love to fight for a better world, a world at peace. Bless us today in this worship gathering as we remember all those who gave the best of themselves for our country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I invite the choir to offer us an anthem for today.
having some technical difficulties with the microphone right now. It is on. <laughs> well, I'm just going to talk really loud until, oh wait, there it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. You say hi to our friends at home. I know Jake hi, friends did, at home. but you hi. can say hi to all our friends Everybody. at home. So this week, we celebrate a very special holiday. And it isn't Thanksgiving, but it is a time to give thanks. And it isn't Independence Day, but it is a time to celebrate our freedom. And it isn't Valentine's Day, even though it is a day to think about love. Okay, Lucy. What holiday do we celebrate this week? Say it out loud. Veterans Day. Veterans Day! This is a day when we honor the men and women who have served in the military. And it's a time for us to say thank you for all that you've done to help keep our world a peaceful and safe place. It's a time to think about love, the love they showed for us and the love they showed for their country. And it's a time to say thank you to them. So we have some veterans here in our church, and I think we should ask them to stand up so we know who they are. Yeah. Okay, would the veterans in our group stand up, please? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have Ken and Charlie and Ron and Bert and Bob, all veterans who served in the United States military. Can we say thank you to them? Everybody thank say a big thank you. Thank you! You may sit down. You may sit down, yes. And Jennifer, thank you. She's pointing to me because I'm a veteran too. I served in the U.S. Navy. Yeah. So how are we going to celebrate this week? What do you think? Do you think we could, well, what are your ideas? You could write a note to a veteran? Yes, what could you do? You could probably give thanks to a veteran, as in probably give them something that they probably don't have. That's a good idea too, give a veteran something they don't have. There's, you know, there's actually a lot of homeless veterans, so we could help them by giving them some yeah, food or clothing. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, perfect. What do you think, Claire? If there's any veterans in our family we, who are close to us, we could go to their house and surprise them and give them a big hug. Yes. If like my grandpa's a veteran, but he's not here today. So today, so when it's Veterans Day, I'm going to go to my grandma and grandpa's house and give my grandpa a big hug. Excellent. So yeah. Claire says we could go to a relative, a veteran. If we have a relative who's a veteran, we could go to their house and surprise them with a big hug like she's going to do for her grandfather. Yeah. Lucy knows I have treats in my hand and she is she is all over me, scratching at my book. Here, come over here. There you go. Um, so another thing you could do is you could say a prayer and give thanks to God for all of the people who are still serving in the military because there's lots of them. You could also go to the parade that's going to be here in Abington. I told you I'd tell you a little more about it. It's going to be Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Starts on Central Street. Is that right? by the police station, and then goes up toward, uh, up Washington Street and, and down toward the center of town. So um, you could find a- Near School? North Abington. So uh, you could Beaver find Brook a- Beaverbrook School? What's that? Near Beaverbrook? Yes, it's gonna go right by where Beaverbrook School is. Oh, I know that. Yeah. yeah. So you could go um, to the parade, and that would be a great way to support veterans. So there's a lot of things that you can do to give thanks and to, to all of our veterans, and believe me, they do appreciate it very, very much. So will you say a prayer with me before we go to Sunday school? Uh -huh. Yes. Dear God, today we remember and honor those who've served in the military to protect our freedom. Help us to always remember to be peacemakers everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you all. You can head down to Sunday school. Bye, I'll be in Sunday school if you need me. So now we are going to share in a moment of passing peace through a short loving kindness meditation. Now I feel like I'm really loud. <laughs> all right. So I invite you now to take a deep breath. Close your eyes if you are comfortable with that. Or if you prefer, you can fix your gaze 
maybe up on the cross. That would be a nice place to fix your gaze if you're here in the sanctuary. Take a moment to get as comfortable as you can in your pew if you're here in the sanctuary or in your chair at home. Continue to take a couple more deep breaths. Relax your body, your mind, your spirit. And bring your attention to your heart, to your emotional heart. That place inside you where you feel love, kindness, and connection. Now bring your mind to the people around you, the people here in our sanctuary, the people at home watching on Facebook, all the people in our community. And as you hold them in your mind and in your heart, start to send these people friendly wishes, warm thoughts, and loving kindness. Imagine that you're talking to them and say to them in your heart, may you always experience peace and happiness. May you always experience joy and love. Now bring your awareness back to your body. Take a couple more deep breaths. And when you're ready, Open your eyes. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to John in the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. Listen for the word of God. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. May God add blessing to this reading of the word. So Veterans Day dates back to 1918, when the armistice, or laying down of arms, was signed on November 11th at 11 a.m. to end what was then called the Great War, or the World War. Veterans Day, although historically related to World War I, is today a day to remember all wars and conflicts, all veterans, and the many ways that our U.S. military and all those who support it have become peacemakers in our world. The United States military is the most benevolent military in the world, always striving for peace. Here in our church, as we saw during the children's moment, we have members of the United States military, Bob Valancourt, Bert Valancourt, Ken Coburn, Ron Marston, Charlie Gale. Are there any others who I did not name? What's that? Oh, myself, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to each one of you for doing your part to win the battle against evil and injustice. 
We also have family members and friends of the military, people who have supported us, believed in us, and prayed for us. And for that reason, this is a day for all of us to remember those who've given so much in defense of our country, and to remember their loved ones and friends, and to remember that we all have a responsibility to be a part of fighting evil and injustice, whether in uniform or not. God calls each of us to be peacemakers in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. There are a lot of people who would suggest that Veterans Day glorifies war and encourages people to think that it's acceptable. They suggest that instead we should speak about the horror of war and proclaim that God is against all violence and against all forms of human inhumanity. We absolutely should speak out against violence because God most certainly is against it. But doing that alone misses the point of Veterans Day. Veterans Day does not glorify war or suffering. Veterans Day is about honoring those who've served in order to celebrate the steps they've helped all of us to take toward peace. It's about honoring the work they've done and the sacrifices they've made so that we can live in freedom and live in peace, a peace that God wants all of us to have. My friends, we are here today worshiping God freely in this sanctuary because of those very people willing to give everything so that we might hold that freedom. And I thank God for them. The scriptures call us all to look at the examples of the faithful, to honor them by remembering them in their acts of faith and peace. The scripture we heard today calls us all to remember that no one has greater love than to lay down their life for another. But whether they live or whether they die, all the men and women of our military have given a piece of their life for us. I know that this group of people loves me beyond measure because of their sacrifices. And I cannot believe that anyone with that depth of love would want anything less than peace in this God's world. To love in the sense that Jesus speaks of in our gospel reading is to freely put the interests of others before your own for the sake of another's welfare. When Jesus says that the greatest love is to lay down your life for your friends, he's saying that the greatest love puts no limits on what it's prepared to give for the sake of others. And when that greatest love goes into action, it lays down no limit as to how far it will go. This kind of love engages in purposeful self-sacrifice, and the purpose is the good of others and the peace of the world. My friends, we are all called to this type of love and peace. Today, we give thanks for those who choose to be a part of the military as a way of sharing their love and peace. But the reality is that love and peace are not limited to those who wear the uniform. Love and peace are the call of each and every one of us. Veterans Day is a time to remember those who've served their country in uniform. It's a time when we remember just why it is they did what they did. It's a time to commit ourselves once again to the battle against evil, striving to live in such a way that we live up to our call to be peacemakers. Amen. You know, I, I'm just going to take note of the fact that we're re we recognize that we're still having difficulty with the microphone. Hopefully it will hold out till the end of worship and we can contact the company this week. Because it is a fairly new system uh, that we didn't use for a year and a half. <laughs> Oh, Lucy's ready for communion, huh? Now, as we prepare to join together at our communion table, I invite you, if you are here in the sanctuary, to take out your communion elements. And if you're at home, I invite you to go get something to eat and something to drink. We come to the table today not as individuals, 
but as a community, united in heart and in soul. Sharing the bread and cup together, Christ makes us one, united in hope and in peace and in joy and in love. No matter who you are or where you are on the journey of life, you are welcome here at our table. May your hearts be lifted in hope. May your spirits be lifted in joy. May your lives be filled with peace. And may you always know the power of love. Today we remember Jesus, who on the night before he died, took a loaf of bread, and he broke it. And he gave thanks to God for it. And he shared it with his friends. And then he said to his friends, each time you share this bread, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, in a similar way, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you share this cup together, do so in remembrance of me. I invite you now to hold your food and drink and say with me, the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Now I invite you to eat and drink together in hope. Will you join with me in prayer? We thank you, God, for the special meal we've shared today. We are grateful for this meal and our faith, both of which connect our hearts deeply. Thank you for the hope Christ gives to us today and always. Amen. prayers to share with you today. First, I'd like to ask for prayers for Betty and Al Randall. Some of you may know them. Uh, they were members of our church many, many years ago, um, and both of them are having some health issues right now and could use your prayers, so keep them in your prayers. Also, I'd like you to pray for Leanne Valancourt's sister, Sandy. She has not been feeling well and is in need of our prayers. Now, will you join with me in prayer? God, we know that our silent tributes are not enough to bring peace to the world. But you said, behold, I make all things new. We know that even our ceremonies are not enough to change the minds of leaders. But your apostle Paul wrote, let your light shine before people. God, we know that our parades and our fanfare are not enough to change the way we do things. But your son Jesus said, this is what I command you, love one another. Be with us today, dear God, in our silent remembrances, in our ceremonies and parades, and especially in our work and in our action and in our ministry. Be with us always as we help create peace in this, your beautiful world. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And before we close Facebook today and head over to the parish hall for coffee hour, I do have a couple of announcements to share. Um, first, I want to mention this pile of stuff here. You may have noticed it. Um, of course, I meant to say something about it earlier, but forgot. I don't know, because it wasn't staring me in the face, I guess. Um, Yesterday, the Boy Scouts here in town had a food drive, and different from the way they've done it in the past, they actually had people come here to drop food off, and this is the food that was dropped off yesterday. They are going to be doing this again next Saturday, but the drop-off location is going to be St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry here in Abington over at St. Bridget Church. So it's quite a blessing that we were able to open our sanctuary to have them bring this food in here, and of course, um, it was a little bit confusing for some of you when you first walked in because um, you thought that this was our in-gathering. Our in-gathering has started over here. There's a couple uh, rolls of um, toilet paper and paper towels over here, which is what we collect during the month of November. Also for the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry here in Abington. So we're going to continue collecting stuff, uh, our paper towels and toilet paper, until the last Sunday of the month, which is actually the first Sunday of Advent. And on that Sunday, we will do our traditional blessing of the toilet paper, which is really a lot of fun. Um, but this stuff will be gone next Sunday. They're going to bring this over to the food pantry and add it to next Saturday's collection. So if you, were, if you didn't get a, to be a part of this, the Boy Scouts food drive, you can still do that. As I said, next Saturday, I believe it's 9 to 1 over at St. Vincent de Paul food pantry. Our beautiful church steeple has been lit for the month of November by Bruce Hughes in honor of the November birthdays of his wife, Kathy Hughes, and Bruce and Kathy's nephew, Brendan Bush, and Bruce's late mother, Ruth Winifred Hughes. Next, I humbly remind you that our church relies on your gifts and offerings to make ministry happen. So if you are able to give a gift or an offering or to make a regular pledge to our church, we would be deeply grateful. Your gifts and offerings allow UCC Abington to help care for the people of this community with God's love. You can give electronically by visiting our website at uccabington.org. You can mail a donation to the church at P.O. Box 2025 here in Abington. Or if you're here in the sanctuary, you can leave an offering in the offering plate that's back in that direction by the door where you came in. And as always, we are always deeply grateful for the gifts you give. A couple other announcements for things coming up. Church Cleanup Day will be this coming Saturday, November 13th at 9 a.m. We are going to meet here in the upper parking lot. Sorry, I'm pointing all over the place for you folks at home and you don't know what I'm pointing at, but these guys do, so we're going to meet in this lot over here. Uh, youth group, our first youth group meeting in a very long time is going to be on November 20th at 10 a.m. We're going to meet down in the church office, and if that does apply to you or your child, you'll certainly be receiving an email uh, from me between now and then. Uh, but it's good for all of you to know that youth group is going to resume. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Veterans Day Parade is Thursday, 10 a.m. here in Abington, so I hope a lot of you will be able to come out and see that. Next Sunday is Stewardship Sunday, um, so be prepared for that. That's always an exciting day in the life of the church where we celebrate all of our wonderful um, gifts and tools for ministry. Uh, just a little bit of advanced notice here, the Advent Workshop will be on November 28th. So we are in need of some uh, crafters and some cupcakes for that. So there's a sign-up sheet over in Kendra's library, pointing again in this direction after worship. You can sign up there if you want to help out with that. Um, and Bible Sunday is going to be that same day, November 28th. It's going to be the first Sunday of Advent, and it's going to be a big celebration, and it's going to be a great day for our kids to finally receive their Bibles. I know we've postponed this a few times because of um, some, some different issues, but finally going to celebrate those kids and give them their Bibles on November 28th. 
Uh, we do need a few more Bible partners for that. So a Bible partner is simply someone from the congregation, a grown-up or an older person who's already received a Bible, who writes a nice note of encouragement to the little one receiving the Bible. So if you would like to be a Bible partner for someone in our congregation or a child in our congregation, please let me know. I already mentioned in-gathering. Our in-gathering will be dedicated on November 28th, so don't forget to grab your toilet paper and paper towels and bring those in between now and the 28th. And one final thing today, we have a couple meetings after worship. First, we have an Oktoberfest wrap-up meeting. So if you came to any of our uh, preparatory meetings for, for Oktoberfest or you were a part of the Oktoberfest marketplace and you have some thoughts and ideas on how we could make it better next year. We're going to just spend a couple minutes just kind of brainstorming and writing down ideas for next year. We also have a pastor parish relations team meeting after worship. So if you are a part of that, uh, we'll probably do the quick Oktoberfest meeting first and then the pastor parish uh, relations team will meet after that. Okay, I think that's all I have for now. So... Go now and be the peacemakers God calls you to be. And may the peace of Christ guide you always. Amen.